All right, session three, we're gonna do big green egg ribs. So as a prep, just like the previous videos, you've got saran wrap, you've got ribs, you've got your rubs, you've got your bowl of water, and you've got your mustard for the rub. Some people prefer olive oil, I prefer mustard. All the mustard is, is an adhesive to get the rub on the meat. You can't taste the mustard whatsoever. All it does is gives that gristle and also is an adhesive to the meat. Step number one. Rub the meat with the, with the mustard. Get an even glaze all over the whole rack of ribs. These ribs are from Costco. They've got good ribs. Your local grocery store has good ribs. Ribs aren't like brisket. You can buy ribs anywhere and they're all gonna be taste about the same. Mustard over there, <laughs> genius. Wash the hands, no sink. I'm doing two rubs here. One of them is on flameroosterbarbecue.com as a homemade. You can find it on there as a rib rub. The other is a, a store bought that's good for sweeter ribs uh, that I like. And I do a little twist of that, which you'll see later. But for this, I always start at the bottom. And you think you don't need that much rub on the bottom, but there's actually a lot of flavor that comes out of the bottom. So you get that on there, and especially the size of the meat here. Now with that mustard, I just sprinkle that on. There's not much coming off. Purpose of the mustard. Now on the top, we're going to do it a little thicker. I'm going to pat that in a little more. You want the more flavor on the top of the meat. Kind of pat slash rub that in. And you're going to get a big old nice flavor out of that. Same thing over here with the other rub. Since these are going to be the, the sweeter ribs, not this, the the hearty ribs like those where there are lots of pepper in it, you need to put a lot of this stuff in there. So really get that on there thick. And I prefer to put a little minced garlic on these ribs to add a little bit more flavor. Lacks a little, little zing to it, and that's it. So this is the night before. This saran wrap is sticky side down on the counter, so you lay it out sticky side down. Put the ribs on top. Put those on a baking pan overnight in the refrigerator. And we'll see you tomorrow. All 
All right, good morning. So about an hour ago, I took the ribs out of the refrigerator, put them on the counter inside. You wanna get them to room temperature for tenderness, and now it's time to prep the grill. So there's two ways to, to start the big green egg. One is via a matchstick that you put in, which I'm gonna do here. It takes about an hour for me to get the temperature right when I'm smoking. When I, when I use the matchstick, the, the fire slowly grows inside and the temperature slowly grow, light raises on that egg. It takes a little longer, but I like to do that and regulate the heat better. If you're running short on time, you can get a traditional charcoal chimney. All you do is load this thing with charcoal, put the matchstick on the bottom and sit it in here for about 10 minutes and all that charcoal will get really hot uh, and actually flames will come up here. And then you take this and you turn it over. That gets your grill uh, you know, regulated in about 25 minutes. Um, but I, I prefer to do that on steaks or pizzas something where I need to get the temperature way up versus when I smoke, uh, I like to take a matchstick. So you get the matchstick, you get it dished down in here in the middle. And you're gonna light both ends of it. The vent on the bottom is open all the way right now. It's a little windy so you can see it's going out on this side. All right, now you're just gonna layer in your charcoal and your wood around it. And I don't have enough wood in here. I use, I use uh, hickory, mesquite, or cherry uh, for long smoke. So this is mesquite in here with a little bit of cherry for smoking ribs. Don't be don't be shy on the, on the wood. It won't burn. It will at the beginning once the fire is up. But um, what's going to happen is you're going to create. create a pile like so what happens is that charcoal burns down the outsides slowly crumble in so this this wood will eventually roll over that's what generates your smoke so I'm gonna let that run about 10 minutes with the lid open and then after 10 minutes I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna shut this and keep this open All right, it's been about 12 minutes, so I, um, I cut the lid down. It's been smoking like this for about five minutes, and the temperature is about uh, 250 in there, so it's about time to set it up. So you're gonna open that up. I like to get the wood chunks right over it. And as always, smoking configuration, feet up. And I always put this back here because the heat on the big green egg comes up to the back. And if you, if you leave that open, this area is gonna get a lot hotter. So this way it distributes the heat evenly over here. This is purely optional, but I always get a tin, uh, tin dish and put water in it to add extra moisture. This is totally optional. I'm not sure how much benefit it actually adds on the big green egg, but I do it just, just to do it. Another good thing this does is catches the, the fat droppings from the meat uh, and, and you know, regenerates some more flavor. Put the grill on. And then for ribs, I got this rack. You can do four full sets of ribs in the large big green egg with this thing. I'm only gonna be doing three today, but four is no problem. You can put that in. And I'm gonna shut that down. 
and let the temperature stabilize before the meat goes in. And I, I want the surface area at 200, between 200 and 225 before I put my meat on. I'm gonna put that on. And at the beginning, I'm gonna put this configuration here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it almost wide open uh, until the, the heat stabilizes. If it gets too hot, I'm gonna dial it down to about right there. For now, I'm just gonna leave it about right there. And I'm gonna crack the vent to about where it is right now, which is about a little over an inch. And I'm gonna let that stabilize. All right, and one other additional optional thing is a meat thermometer. I like uh, ThermalWorks products. I've got this in the Thermapin. This is a two probe uh, temperature gauge, really good quality. Um, on one end is for the grill temperature, and the other is the meat probe. The meat probe's not that relevant on ribs because I can just usually look at them after about five hours, they're done, but this this helps if, if you're doing a pork shoulder or, or a brisket. But uh, what I found on the big green egg is the temperature up here um, is always about 25 degrees uh, higher than what it actually is. So inside, and this thing will read, uh, you know, 225 when in fact it's actually 250 inside because of the surface area is closer to the fire. So this helps um, me determine that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this temperature probe down right where the meat is on the surface. And that's going to tell me really what my temperature is. I like to smoke my ribs at around 225. Uh, any more than that, it gets not as tender and not as juicy, so uh, that helps. Okay, it's been about uh, it's been about 45 minutes total since the process started. You can see the the grills at about 175 there, um, but the reader here has got it almost at 190. This bottom number, so. Yeah. Right now it's uh, you know only a 15 degree difference, so it's usually 15 to 25 degree difference. But um, I like to put the meat on prior to it getting to, to temperature because it still needs to climb up a little bit. But we got a, a lot of smoke generating right now, so it's a good time to put the meat on. So we got three racks. Usually put the, the, the meteor rack in the back. Because it's gonna be hotter back there. This is the, the spicy. It's not as meaty, so it's gonna come up here. I cut the other cut other one in half so it'd have evenly uh, even amount of ribs. So that's the sweet. And another spicy. So I'm gonna shut this down and get it to about 225 on the surface temperature and let them cook for about four hours. After four hours, I'm gonna take the sweet ones off. These, these two, put a little butter on them, a little brown sugar, wrap them in foil and put them back in there. It's gonna caramelize a little bit on them. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave these in here just smoking like they are. Those are traditional Texas ribs, but uh, it's nice to have two flavors for, for uh, people at night. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut this down to about halfway close there. And then I'm gonna, keep this at about an inch and I'm gonna see what the temperature does on that when it gets to 225 if it regulates I'll leave it like that if it's below that I'll probably crack this about that much and then I'll probably open the bottom just about a millimeter but that's it so we'll see you in five hours I don't do anything during the process between now 
uh, and then you get you got to trust your temperature and you know that they're they take about you know four to five hours to cook so you'll check the meat temperature after you know four hours just to be safe uh, and if they're done you wrap them in foil and let them rest and if they're not you keep them keep them cooking all right welcome back it's been about four and a half hours and this is the first time I've opened up the lid and you can see see the bone on the left there that pulling off the meat pulls away from the bone a little bit that's when you know it's done the other indicator is 165 degrees those are ready to go so there's two kinds of meat that I did one was a dry rub one was not the one with the dry rub I'm going to take off now and put in the cooler and rest So you just put in foil. And wrap it tight. And put that in a cooler for at least an hour. A cooler keeps heat as much as it does cool. So that's why you put it in a cooler. It'll be as hot as it is right now, an hour even three hours from now. The sweet ribs, I do a little bit of different something there. That's a sweet rib. I'm gonna do two, two things with this. I'm gonna take butter. Yep, this regular hand squeeze old fashioned butter. Just do a strip kinda in there. And rub that in. Then you're gonna take brown sugar. Kind of rub it in evenly. Get that on there. And you're gonna wrap that back up. I'm gonna put that back on the fire for about 20 minutes. And that's gonna caramelize that, that butter and that sugar. Make a nice sweet, spicy balance on those ribs. Okay, so, so, so the two sweet ribs, I'm going to take them, they're wrapped in foil, I'm going to put them back on there for 20 minutes. You'll notice the, the cap is on the top and, it, and the bottom is completely shut, so the, all that's going to do is caramelize that sugar and that butter on the top of those ribs and make them come out perfectly. And then the other two racks of ribs are sitting in that cooler right there. And those are going to remain hot and continue to cook for about 10 minutes. And then they'll just rest in there and the flavor will drop down into that meat. And that's how you smoke ribs on the big green egg.